Excel accounting practice problem. Create accounting worksheet part number three. Get ready, because we're about to Excel with Excel. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we started putting this information together from a blank Excel worksheet. So you can start from scratch if you so choose, looking at the prior presentations. If you have access to this workbook, there's going to be two tabs down below. Example tab, practice tab, example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's look at it now. Go into the example tab. In prior presentations, we put this information on the left together. This is where we're going to enter the actual transactions. Note, as we enter the transactions, we're going to have debits and credits in two different columns, but we're still going to represent the credits as negative numbers. Then we're going to post that information to both this trial balance entries column as well as the general ledger so that we can see how both of those two things work. And hopefully this will be a little bit more clear as to why I'm going to put this up together this way uh, as we go. In future presentations, we'll probably create a system when we do another practice problem where we'll just post it to the general le ledger, for example. The general ledger then will be used to create the trial balance. However, when you use that system, then it can be a little, you get lost. People get lost between how the general ledger ties in to the trial balance and so on. So we'll talk more about that as we go. But note on our trial balance, we put this together then. Now we got our assets in green, liabilities in orange, equity in the blue, and then the different blue slightly for the income statement accounts. We got the beginning balance. We're going to enter our entries and then get to our ending balance. Here, we do not have two columns for the debits and credits because if we did, it would one, create six columns instead of three, and two, it would greatly complicate formulas such as the ending balance where we'd have to have adding and subtracting and so on instead of this, a nice clean sum function. So this is a very practical way to set up the worksheet. We also have a nice practical check figure at the bottom giving us a zero in the total. We also have a nice net income calculation with a simple formula of the sum function, something you can't do if you had a debit and credit column. So this is a nice clean way to set it up. It's not the only way to set it up, but I think it's the, the cleanest way to set it up. Then we're going to have our general ledger. This is where we're going to go now. The general ledger representing the detail of each individual account. So each of these accounts then over here need to be represented by a general ledger account. This could be kind of a tedious process because we're going to have to give us room so that we can add more data in the future as we enter the, the uh, general ledger accounts. And if we need to add more accounts, we're going to have to add them over here and we'll have to add a GL account, which can be somewhat tedious, but we'll work on how to do that and, and, and work with our Excel worksheet as we push those things around. So that's going to be our, now our general ledger is going to back up and support this information, the data that should sum up at the end or total of it should sum up to the amount on the trial balance. We'll also double check that it adds up to zero or the debits equal the credits as well by having our nice little check figure up top. This way, when we do the data input, we could see the direct impact on the accounts impacted and we could see the impact on the general ledger, the detail in the general ledger and the fact that the general ledger also has to add up to zero and basically tie up to these ending balances. That's our objective. So let's go to the second tab over here and let's start to make this thing. Let's put this thing together. So now we're just going to make our general ledger accounts. So we're going to say, let's, let's pull this. I'm going to pull this one in a little bit here. I'm going to call this the, the general ledger. Now I want to keep this first column as a check number here that'll give us a nice check up top, just like this zero down below that the GL is tying out. So I'm going to start my GL header right here. It's going to be called the general ledger. It might also be called the GL. So there we have it. And then I'm going to make that black and white. I'll make like these couple columns black and white just to show it's a header, font group, bucket, black, and the white on the lettering. So we'll go further format that later, but that's where I'll keep it for now. Let's make this one black and white just so it is but i got the, i've got it started over here and i'll do something different with that cell later once we're done with this whole process so then we're going to have we're going to have the name of the account now the name of the account i'd like to pull over directly so i don't misspell it or anything like that so i'm going to say this equals the checking account here and i'll just pull that over directly so it's tied in so if i so there's no way i can kind of mess it up and have different names or anything like that then i'm going to have a date field here and then we're going to have 
the entry field, and then we're going to have the balance that will be in place. And so the date field, notice I'd like the date field to be set up in date format. I want it to be the same kind of date format as this date field. So what I'll do is I'll put my cursor over here and I'll use the format format paint brush to brush down on that paint field on that date field. So I'll take it all the way down, say to the bottom of my trial balance. So those will all be kind of formatted in a date type of format. So if I typed in one one, we get that date with the with the no year on it. So there is that on the, the checking account. What I'd like to do is center this across my whole little item down here, my whole three columns. I don't like to do that with the merging, alignment and merge, you could do that. But then I, I can't do anything to the columns if I need to, I can't move things around as easily. So what, what I wanna do is undo that and do it, do it this way, which I think is better, although less easily found. More people don't know about this generally, so you can go right click, you can go format cells. Over those three cells, I would like to go to the alignment group and then horizontal alignment and like to center it across those three cells. Center it across those three cells. And then we're going to say, okay. So now we've got that nice centering and we don't have this thing where, where it messes up these columns. Then we'll make it that green. Let's do this whole thing and make it that uh, green and uh, green. So I'm going to go to the font group. Let's make this that green by going to that dark green over here. And then I'm going to go to the lettering and make that that light green. So there we have that. Let's center these items. I'm going to center these alignment and center. I'm going to make this date column a little bit shorter. I'm going to double click on it, maybe a little bit larger than that. Because like if it was like 1231, that's about as wide as the date gets. That fits there. Maybe I'll make it a little bit wider just in case I, I increase the screen size or something like that. So there we go. And then we're going to say that that looks good. So instead of this first date, I'm going to say this is going to be the beginning balance. We're going to say this is the starting point and this, and then we're going to continue from there after that starting point in our practice problem. Now the beginning balance is going to be the same as the number I put into the trial balance. Note, you can do this basically two ways. I, I want to tie these two, these beginning balances together. So I'm going to do it by saying this equals this number, the beginning balance on the trial balance. You could also do that if you're creating this practice problem by first making this 100,000 and, and tying that into your trial balance by making it equal to the beginning balances. All the beginning balances should tie out. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep it this way, 100,000. And this is going to be equal to that 100,000. Now note, you cannot make it equal to this 100,000 because that's the ending balance which should tie out to the ending balance when we get when we start entering data in this. So just make sure you're picking it up from column G and not column I. So I'm going to say okay. So there's there's going to be that and then I'll make this this whole column here. I want to make that green, green and green. I'm going to put this all the way down and the reason I'm making this one longer is cuz it's the checking account. And usually there's more activity in the checking account because more types of transactions are in it than any other. Every other account, I'm going to make like two, two sets here that'll fit in the same space. So this one will be the longer of the, of the longest GL account. So I'm going to make this the, the green and white. And then this middle column where we're going to have the, the entries is going to be going to be the blue. So I'm going to hit the drop down. We want that blue, which once again is found in the more colors. Standard, there's the blue. Okay, let's put the brackets around it. So there we have that. So that looks good. And, and so now I'm, and so also I could put the borders around this. Let's put the white borders around this one. And I could, and I'm, I'm going to do that by going to the font group, drop down. We're going to say, let's put all borders or more borders down here. I'm going to put the white borders to make them stand out a little bit, making them white. And then I'll put the bracket all the way around and in the middle. So there we have it. So now we got those white, those white borders stand out a little bit more. So now I'm just going to do the same thing for all the asset accounts. And then next time we'll move on to the liabilities and so on. So I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller and we'll continue on to the next one. And then what, what I can do is I could, I could basically copy the formatting here. So I'm going to select possibly this whole column, copy that, and I'm going to paste it in column O, just copying it over. I don't really want the GL there again, so I'm going to delete the GL and I'll deal, I'll deal with 
with how I'm going to format the GL in future presentations. We'll deal with that later. And then I also don't want this going all the way down. I want it going like halfway down. So I'm going to stop it at like 12 in everything underneath. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to right click and delete and shift the cells up so that I can then fit two. I want to fit two columns or two sets of, of GLs here. And then this one is going to be the undeposited funds. So I'm going to say this equals undeposited funds. And so now we've got, and the rest is basically the same, beginning balance. And then the beginning balance, I want to be equal to that zero. Make sure you're picking it from column G, not column I. There we have it. And then I'm just going to take this item here, copy it. I'm going to paste it right down here. So now we have a, a nice even. I'm going to try to pick up two, everything but the cash item. I'm going to have two per per length here of the of the accounts. Hopefully that's enough room. The next one's going to be then accounts receivable. So this equals the accounts receivable. The beginning balance is going to equal that 2000. And now I've got this whole column that that is the same. I want to I'm going to copy from the skinny row or column to column Q, control C. I'm going to put that right here on column R, control V. I'm not high enough. I'm not high enough in there. Oh, I got okay. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna copy the whole thing. Control C, but from column N, N over, copy, and then paste it up here. So there we got it. All right. So now we got undeposited funds. We left off with no accounts receivable. Now we're on the inventory. So this equals the inventory amount. And then the beginning balance in U is going to be equal to that 4375. And then this one is going to be equal to the next one, which is furniture and equipment. And the beginning balance is going to be equal to the, the 16,000, making sure I pick it up from column G. Did I pick this one up from column G? Yeah. And then we're going to do this one more time. For the last one, I'm going to copy from column R, I'm going to column R over to column U, control, control C. I'm going to put that in V, V1, because it'll paste that skinny column too. There it is. And then the last asset, which is the contra asset, which is the contra asset account of accumulated depreciation. And then that one is going to be equal to the beginning balance of the negative 4,000. Now, if, if you're thinking, oh, what if I messed this up? This is getting quite long. We will put the check figure up here, adding up all the, all the GL accounts to double check it. Now, I'm going to stop here, and the next time we'll continue this process, and we'll do the liabilities and then the equity next time, and then we'll continue on with the income and expense accounts, just creating this full GL, and then we'll format it up top, getting our GL formatting to check how everything kind of ties together.